Hi, I'm William Mills. I'm at Finnovate Spring and I have the opportunity to meet with Tim Urban, founder of the popular Wait But Why website. How are you doing today, Tim? I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. You're, I caught the beginning of your presentation this morning and it started with a very cool title, The Rise of the Machines. For those folks that weren't able to attend, can you tell us a few of the key topics and takeaways from your presentation today? Yeah, it's um, the, the, big, the big topic is the general time we were all born in, which mm. is if, if, if the human history is a movie, this is the climax of the movie. And it's not just, I'm not just saying that because I live now. Um, if you look at the last 200 years or even the last 50 years compared to all the 200 year times before that, um, it is it, uh, utterly anomalous, the time we are living in. Um, we are flying in planes for the first time, driving cars, we are on the phone. We are on FaceTime, we have the internet, we right. can record movies and take photos, and we have seven billion people instead of under one. I mean, you can go on and on and on with things that are completely unique to this one 200 year block versus everyone before that. So that's the big story. Um, AI and the revolution that's happening with AI is, is one of the symptoms of that story, along with the revolutions that are happening with genetic engineering and in, things like driverless cars and in brain machine interfaces and VR and it's going to uh, be a crazy few decades so then I you know I, I talked about AI in particular and how um, we have to think about exponential growth and how um, the next five or ten years we'll see uh, maybe as much of a revolution just in narrow intelligent AI uh, not that different than the stuff we have today it may be similar to how electricity kind of came in in ten years inf infiltrated everything Right. in the 1880s or the internet kind of did that in the 90s and um, in the 2000s. So um, I, think, um, I think we have a, a crazy few years ahead of us and then, uh, then it could get even weirder beyond that when AI becomes super intelligent and we have the, by far the smartest thing on this planet um, is, is machines and not humans anymore. That, that's a different thing. So I think we have a big, a uh, lot to look forward to and maybe a lot to be scared of as well if we don't pull it off. Well, in the short term, in the next five, 10 years, how do you see AI really being a game changer related to the financial industry? Yeah, well, there's a lot of industries that, uh, that AI in particular will have a big impact in. And I think uh, various financial services industries, I think um, uh, are definitely on that list because um, AI ha can make its biggest impact in places where there's a lot of data right. and uh, where people are looking for patterns and uh, trying to uh, get the story out of a huge amount of data. And that's the case when you're risk management, for example, assessing um, you know, um, who's uh, safe to give a loan to, mm -hmm. um, fraud. Uh, the, you know, th th there are patterns here that an AI can just see that a human has to do a lot of analysis for. Uh, so you'll see things like um, there'll be f AI fraud detection systems where you know a thousand claims come in and only uh, and instead of having you know I don't know whatever percentage of them be um, fraudulent right. that an agent has to go through and l suss out instead um, almost none of the fraudulent ones even reach the agent. Kind of like your spam filter right now right. filters out spam. It'll be a little bit like that. The AI will take care of that. It will be able to. It'll be become amazing at that. So. Um, the, you know, there's a lot of customer service in the financial services world. Chat bots and things like that will just free up humans um, right. in some major ways. So I think, um, I think that it'll be a huge plus. I think that people will still have their jobs, but they'll be doing the more interesting, creative, high level parts of their jobs and letting AI do a lot of the menial stuff way better than humans could ever have done it. I couldn't agree with you more. I'm in uh, total agreement on that. I, I was interested in some of your kind of really out there predictions on how AI will impact our lives related to the financial part of our lives in the coming years. What's the, what's the wildest example you might can think of? Well, I mean, I just look at, uh, you know, banks in 2019 are projected to spend five billion um, on you know, AI, moment. yeah, on on, uh, on developing AI, and um, and people say in the coming years it could save banks like two hundred billion dollars, um, uh, new AI systems. So I think that it and it's it's all the implications that come from that. Um, I mean that's great for the economy in the end if 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 if, if banks are more efficient. Um, so I think that the that the most out there predictions are things that will be the result of the whole financial 
services industry becoming like m super efficient. Um, I think that there'll be, I do think that there'll be some tough, um, tough uh, bumps in the road with things like um, when you have uh, risk management or you have uh, when you have something like, like loan assessments, right. um, one of the problems you have today is you know bias in humans. And one of the worries is that uh, on one hand, computers aren't biased. They don't have the same kind of human baggage we have, so that's great. But um, they could do, you know, a, a, a loan assessment AI could do something like, say, um, no one in this zip code. Uh, I'm just not going to give loans to anyone in this zip code because that my system says that that's probably a good but financial move. That might move. be illegal. It, and it would be illegal, which is why there's going to be a lot of, um, that's one of the tricky things, is trying to make sure that the AI is doing things legally and not kind of bringing in accidentally unethical things. So that's going to be a hard one. But I think, um, I think that, uh, that you'll see some, some changes, you know, the entire... Um, you'll see, you know, it could be an entire boom in the economy due to something like the financial services industry just uh, becoming airtight. Well, I know you've seen a lot of fear among folks uh, regarding AI. How do you think the benefits will outweigh some of the fears about privacy and in in artificial intelligence? Yeah, I think um, I think that in some ways um, right now is when it's going to be trickiest with privacy because it's like the wild west this is all new so none of us even know what etiquette should be and we don't really know what the you know general kind of policies we should have and i think that as uh, we start to get more familiar i think actually we will start to figure out what how we feel about privacy in that future world and we'll start to actually be able to you know you maybe use ai to take control of our privacy um, in a way that um, that right now is kind of when all the it's a very loose filter right now and and we, we were kind of caught off guard um, but uh, I, one of the one thing i come back to is i always think about um, the fact that if you read um, you know the book sapiens for example um, he talks about how um, it was really the ability to believe in a better future that allowed for uh, credit and the concept of credit is why we have this economy now right and if you think about um, so it's a game of trust and what AI can do is AI can um, can make people feel I think make people in you know in the financial services industries feel more confident about giving loans for example or um, it allows individuals to plan better and actually save more and there can be AI that is kind of running their AI can be the adult that runs our finances that most of us don't have um, a, a lot of us need is a kind of an adult in the room to help right. us save and, and manage so I think that um, I do think it's going to be uh, very positive at least in this area I think that there could be some um, lots of negative potential in this area or others but I think the financial services industry is one that will benefit very strongly from this. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate your time today, and this is William Mills with Tim Urban here at Finnovate Spring in San Francisco.